Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock. Happy holiday to you and yours. I hope you're enjoying uh, the Christmas break. We have a special, special holiday edition of Fearless uh, with Jason Whitlock. We're going to be joined by our main man in Washington, D.C., the Professor Delano Squires. Get you smart. Give you something to think about and marinate over the holiday season, something to talk with your family about uh, while you're enjoying the holidays and Christmas. Uh, Delano, uh, welcome into the show. Uh, you wrote a column a couple of weeks ago that I want us to discuss, and it's about uh, the transformation of the black male image mm -hmm. and, and where it's gone and how we got here. Anyway, you unpack it, you define the conversation for us, and we'll go from there. Sure. So, yeah, Jason. So I started by um, mentioning a hashtag that I saw, you know, even prior to when I wrote the column one about trans day of remembrance. And and one, this stuff has seeped out of June and is now a year round thing where it's like trans day of visibility, trans day of remembrance. But one of the things that I noticed is um, the number of black public officials. And I'm, I'm thinking the governor of Maryland, my, my, where I live, Westmore. The mayor of New York City, Eric Adams. The mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott. The mayor of Chicago, Brandon Johnson. Uh, Senator Raphael Warnock, who were all basically repeating the same lines about, um, you know, their trans siblings and 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 violence and a day of remembrance. And, and then I saw a post from the National Urban League, which basically said the same thing. And it struck me that. Um, this was an example of how much the public image of the black male has been transitioned, for lack of a better term, no pun intended, over the last generation. Because now you have black men in very prominent positions who are repeating all of the same LGBTQIA plus propaganda that their white counterparts in the Democratic Party repeat on a daily basis. And, and this is a seismic shift because, and I made this piece point in the article, for years, the dominant image of the black male was one that was sort of curated and created by hip hop and hip hop culture. And it was described as misogynistic and oftentimes homophobic. And, and now what you've seen is a complete turnaround. And I'd say in the span of 15 years, um, the, as I said in the piece, black men have went from sort of the, the tough, cool pose to now soft. Basically, that, that's, that's, that's where I sort of landed. And it's not just with the LGBT stuff. I also talked about in terms of tone and disposition and affect, the number of guys. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying this is all black men. I'm talking specifically, specifically about black men in the public square. The Don Lemons, the Charles Blows, the guys who write for Deadspin, the, the guy who, who wrote that piece on the, on the kid who, who he said was in blackface at the, at the Chiefs game, right? Who has me blocked, by the way, softy. But all these guys speak in terms of trauma and microaggressions and harms, and they walk around in a perpetual state of fear. And, and to show you how bad this has been, early in 2020, or in 2020, early in the COVID sort of pandemic, one guy wrote for the Boston Globe that he was afraid to wear a mask in public because he's a black man in America and he wants to live. Um, and and he, he'd either die from COVID from not wearing it or die because he's a black man in a mask from wearing it. And then by 2022, you have uh, Damon Young, who who's co-founded the site Very Smart Brothers, writing in the Washington Post that he still was wearing a mask to the gym. And even though he knew it was the right thing to do, he felt dumb for doing it. So these guys are afraid to, to wear a mask and to not wear a mask. And, and I think it was worth pointing out in this, in this piece. The, the thing, I took away from your piece and, and your explanation here is, is what, what just overcomes me is just how much of our identity is defined by politics. And, mm. and that's why I'm not a fan of politics and particularly political idolatry. It, it, it's like too many. And, and you're talking about the high profile guys that are on TV and are out there and, and are assembled to the rest of black America, black men, but, but it, it even trickles down beneath that in terms of how everything has become mm. so politicized and people are always trying to protect 
their political identity and they'll sacrifice their masculinity and everything else to make sure they're in good standing politically with the Democrat Party primarily. And and I, I guess the the justification must be, and, and the only one I can really think of is like, my paycheck for the people you point out, Eric Adams and Van Jones and you know the talky Karan Phillips, their paycheck is tied to this mm-hmm. political identity. And 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 look, they'll say the same about me or you that, oh, will you guys take your positions to protect your conservative political identity? I would say, uh, certainly for myself, and and I would say for you, I'm most concerned about and really only concerned about protecting my Christian identity. And, but anyway, am I right for thinking that what you're talking about is all being driven by obsession with political identity? Absolutely, I mean, that that definitely is the driving force. And and you're right, they'll say, oh, well you guys just, you're the same on on the opposite side. But there's a few key differences, one, I, and I'll, I'll speak personally, I'm sure it's the same for you. I never say anything that I don't actually believe. Whereas on the other side, these guys will say with a straight face that they believe that a man can get pregnant, right? Now, they don't actually believe that, and they don't actually believe that a man can become a woman. And the reason I know that is because any of the ones who identify as straight, I'm, I'm, willing, to, I'm willing to bet the deed to my house that, that they would not sign up for a date with a, a, a woman who actually is, was born with male parts, right? So the difference is that they're talking about things and affirming things in public that they don't actually believe in their private lives. Um, so, so yes, this is largely driven by political identity and a lot of it is personal gain, uh, right? Because if you want to be a Democrat in good standing, you have to affirm the pride agenda. It is mandatory. You have to affirm and support abortion and you have to affirm pride, all of it. Um, and these guys know that, but it's, and, and it's not just the politicians, right? We've talked before on the show, the number of old guard black revolutionaries, the, the Bill Rodins and the Mike Wilbons, the guys who, you know, they're all about fist in the air um, and, and sticking it to the man, at least in their younger days when, it, when their froze were a lot fuller. These guys are the same, exact same. They, if, if you want to advance an ESPN or a Fox News, you either have to be silent on these issues or, or you have to carry the left's water on these issues. And to me, um, it, it really is sad to see how badly so many of these guys are going out. And it's not just them. And you hit on this um, just now when you were speaking. It's the influence that they have on all the guys behind them. And that's why when you have the, the see, it's one thing if you have Mark Lamont Hill saying men can get pregnant because he's an academic and people just look at, you know, Regular guys don't necessarily listen to college professors, but when your favorite basketball player, whether it's in the 1990s, whether it's Charles Barkley saying, look, drink the Bud Light, guys. You know, if, I, if you're gay, I love you. If you're trans, I love you even more. And if you don't like it, then, then F you. Or if it's Dwayne Wade, you're talking about sort of apex masculinity. The guys who represent that now telling the men who look up to them that hey, you should you should um, uh, affirm and believe and support these things as well, and it, and it really is sad to see guys go out that way. Well, it, it, it's not even just saying things they don't believe, but I, I I think the protection of the political left identity, the Democrat identity, causes you to just flat out lie and adopt. Mm narratives that that you know black men basically if you want to be in good standing have to and I say I use the word pretend because pretend that they hate the police that that's mm. being pro black hating the police is being pro black I, I I I went to college some of my best friends went into law enforcement uh, and these guys, they're married to black women. They were members of black fraternities. You know, no one's questioning their blackness. Mm. They're, they went into law enforcement, had 
good long law enforcement careers. And and I don't want to have to feel any pressure like I have to pretend like I hate the police because I don't. I'm not a criminal. For the most part, uh, you know, like I said, let's say I've had 100 engagements with police. All but one of them have gone relatively well. Uh, you mm. know, I've gotten some tickets and things like that, but I've only been mistreated one time. And so I, I'm not going to run around and pretend like I hate the police. And I think a lot of people do. And, 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 by, and then the next thing you know, you're supporting policies that actually don't serve your community. Hey, let's defund the police. I, I, mm -hmm. And now your mama's neighborhood, your grandmama's neighborhood, maybe even the neighborhood you're living in is far less safe because you've had to put on this gimmick of, I hate the police. And, and, and so I've made it as clear as I can for, for me individually. It's like, hey man, I'm really hesitant to vote. You know, I really don't like any of these politicians. But, but the one thing I can say, like people calling me a conservative mm. doesn't force me to lie or adopt positions and attitudes and behaviors that destroy me. And yeah. so but on the other side, that's just not the case. You have to, again, you got to be, uh, I can't imagine any black man that, you know what, uh, killing my seed in the womb, that's a good thing. Yeah. I, but you got to, you got to go that route. You got to be pro-abortion yeah. if you want to protect your black identity uh, as defined by the Democrat Party. And, and, and there's so many forces at play, and, and, and to your point, right? Now, let me say this. There are probably some guys out there who legitimately hate the police, and, 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 and I know some people who have had some, some very bad encounters, particularly as younger men, with, with the police that sort of left them jaded. But regardless of you know, what your, how your personal feelings towards the police are, unless you are in a street gang, organized crime, or have family members, you need the police. Because a lot of these guys, the the the, the activist types and the and the you know the more softer uh, guys that I'm thinking about, I mean, they're not going to do their own wet work, right? So if they get robbed or beat up or or if there's people loitering outside of their house, they're civilians just like anybody else. And the first call they're going to make is to 911, um, and that's why the police come out to settle noise disputes and domestic disputes and all types of other disputes between individuals. So the thing is, the notion that, uh, oh, we wanna defund the police is probably one of the dumbest things that I've ever heard come out of the mouth of, of, of politicians or activists. And that's a very crowded field, so that's actually a, a pretty impressive feat. Uh, but yeah, but the, the, the forces, the political forces, um, I, I didn't even mention the, the sort of gender forces, because a lot of these guys, have been so beaten down by the women in their families, in their communities, and um, and then a part of this even goes back to politics, but not necessarily electoral politics. When you see the world through oppressed oppressor lenses, right, and you're a black man, and you've spent your entire life seeing yourself, your primary, uh, the foundation of your identity is that you are oppressed and marginalized. The last thing you want to do or feel is if you are heaping that oppression onto somebody else. And, and, and that is what um, the feminists use as a lever to, to gain power over these guys. Because they, they say, well, I can't, I can't say that to women. Or I can't police how women think or speak or, or what they wear. So I'll just, you know, if my 16-year-old wants to go out in booty shorts, who, who am I to say that she can't? Well, you're her father. That's, that's who you are. So th these guys have been weakened and ground down over years by, by feminists. And then uh, at a certain point, the LGBT crowd um, chimed in to say, black men, your toxic masculinity is, is what's really holding back the black community. And, and now they are docile and ineffectual. Um, and, and when Tiffany Cross or Jamel Hill or whoever else says, you just need to fall in line and, and vote with black women, they just say, oh yeah, that's a good point. When black women lead, then everybody wins. Black women save democracy. So they, they have been sort of captured in that way. Um, but but the, the political piece is there as well because they know, again, to be in good standing, these are the things that you have to say. And, and it is, and I said this early on on the show, 
Leftism today, modern progressivism is a death culture. This is no longer about the local union, the electrician or the carpenter's union. This is not about higher wages if you work in a factory. This is about affirming um, gender mutilation for teenagers. It's about affirming abortion, right? And promoting abortion as a positive good. Um, and distant third is, is the climate change agenda. So, so yeah, th these guys have to say that to be pro-black means to kill your seed, and if, and if your seed survives somehow, it's to hand them over to Planned Parenthood for a lifetime of, of, uh, of cross-sex hormones and, and Lupron in order to, to you know, be a good person and a good parent. And that to me, that death cult and that death spiral is something that we need to pull ourselves out of as a community. But, but particularly as they framed it for black men on the left, it's an emasculation cult because mm -hmm. your, your primary worldview has to be my destiny is in the control of the white mm. man and, and I'm, not, I'm not king of the jungle. I'm not the lion. I'm, I'm not a guy that can make things happen. I'm totally dependent upon whatever the man is willing to give me and so, and again, I, my identity, I'm try, trying to hard every day. It's in Christ, but okay, you want to put the conservative label on me. Well, part of my conservative belief is that, you know, I can cast down my bucket, as Booker T. Washington said, and, and build my own thing, as I saw my father do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's a belief in myself and in my power to control my own destiny create happiness, create prosperity, create success uh, for myself. And, and this other worldview says, no, uh, you have to believe the white man and the system and the government is primarily responsible for your destiny mm. and success, your upward mobility, your ability to take care of your wife and kids and all that. And, and basically I tell you, you don't even need a wife. Uh, your, your baby mama or, or whatever. And so I just, this whole political identity that they've looped us into just naturally emasculates us. Jason, you hit the nail on the head. And, and, and I was thinking about this and, and going back and forth with people on, on Twitter a few weeks ago about this. When we, when we hear the word emasculation, most people think, oh, Hollywood is making somebody wear a dress or do drag or... Um, you know, something of that sort. And, and yes, those things are emasculating. But I think the most em emasculating thing that sort of goes under the radar, sort of in, in, at least in the public square, is the idea that individuals do not have responsibility for the direction of their own lives. And this is most, m much more prevalent within the black community, where um, if, 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 some, if some rapper gets shot and we say, man, look at the violence that's associated with rap, the response from the culture is, well, if, if, you, um, if you remove the barriers to success, if you had universal health care and you had um, full funding for public education, now, they never say who's responsible for doing these things. It's an amorphous they. If they gave us this, then we would be able to do that. And that, to me, is the silent emasculation that is killing the black community. And I don't understand any man who would hold his own gelding shears and get on social media and say, I'm not responsible for the things that go on in my household. Some, some elected official or some unelected bureaucrat is responsible for that. And I'm not responsible for my own kids, right? If my 13-year-old is out there bopping people upside the head and stealing their cars, oh, it's because the rec center closed at 9 p.m. instead of 11 p.m. Right. If he if he was at the rec center playing pickleball or, or hopscotch, then then he wouldn't be getting into trouble. And I see this every single day, specifically when it comes to the black community. It's always somebody else's responsibility to fix something um, before we can do the things that we need to do to improve our own social condition. So, yes, you, you that, that, that's why I, I was saying mm, because you was you were spot on. On, with, with respect to that analysis and the, the emasculating effect that it has, particularly within the black community. And lastly, I, I would say that 
this identity and, and leaning into it, it, it makes you believe in the matriarchy. And mm. it makes you see uh, the black woman as your savior. And it's, it's, and, and it's like, I, as it relates to the Democrat Party, I get why black women support it. They're getting Absolutely. all kind. You know, Ka Kamala Harris gets to be mm -hmm. vice president. Uh, mm -hmm. Michelle Obama may run for president. Stacey Abrams can't balance a checkbook. Uh, and, and but she's some kind of political superstar. Having mm. again, I don't know what she's accomplished. Uh, yeah, some some spicy sex novels, I guess, is is her accomplishments. Uh, and and but she's seen as a, a superstar, as a, a a political force. Joy Reid gets to sit on TV in white women's wigs every other day, mm. uh, and make millions of dollars babbling. I get why they're all in, there's something in it for them. I just would love to ask black men, what is in it for us? And 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 because they certainly ask that about those of us. And again, I've never voted, but but I'll I'll carry that cross if that's if Whitlock's a conservative, I'll carry that. They'll ask the same thing to us. Well, what's in it for you with the conservative? Well. First of all, I'm not looking for anything. I just want the government to get out of my way and I'll mm. handle the rest. So I'm, I'm not judging it by, hey, what, what did the government do for me? And that, that's, I, 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 every time we get in that conversation, they say, oh, Barack Obama didn't do nothing for black people and so-and-so didn't do nothing for me. I'm not, I just want them to get out of my way. Right. So I don't, have, I don't bring that expectation. But but y'all bring that expectation of, well, the government should do something for me. And so as a black man, I would love to know what the Democrat Party has done for them. Well, I, decreased mass incarceration? I, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, if you want to break down modern American politics sort of to a root level, um, Democrats are the party of radical feminism and matriarchy. Uh, and Republicans, at least for now, are the party that allows for um, you know, male leadership, allows for religious um, you know, convictions and so on and so forth. So a, a vote for Dems is a vote for the matriarchy. People don't wanna hear that, but it's the truth. Everything is about empowering women. And one of the things that, that I wrote in a, in a column um, a couple of weeks back is that this is why the marriage conversation that we have so often across the board, but particularly in the black community, is so important. Because when a man and a wife, a man and a woman are husband and wife in the same household, they have interests that converge. And that woman, as pro-woman as she may be in her private time, is not interested in any new diversity program that's going to take bread out of her, her husband's mouth. So, so if he's a master carpenter or master electrician, and she hears, oh, the, a new, uh, the new Democratic president is gonna is gonna do some initiative that that makes construction go from 90% male to 60% male, she's going to say that is going to impact my household. So yeah, I'm I'm for the for the girls, I'm for the sisterhood Monday through through Friday, but but my husband needs to bring home a paycheck at the end of the week. But when man and woman are no longer husband and wife, but just a, a man and a woman or baby mama, baby daddy sort of situation. Now they're not acting with um, sort of converging interests. The woman is saying, if I vote for the Democrat, he said he's gonna increase social spending. He said he's, he also said he's gonna crack down on child support cheats. So I'm, me voting for him places him as the male authority in my home and squeezes more money out of my child's father. And on top of that, um, my sister who went to college, who went to med school or law school, I see how the Democrats are promising her things, judgeships, um, positions, VP, first Supreme black uh, woman on the Supreme Court, 14 federal judges, uh, uh, DEI consultancies, media jobs. Uh, I, I see that, I mean, they, these are the people who say, they say that black women save democracy. So of course I'm gonna vote for them. They are pro-black woman. But that, that, that is, and that is how 
even as much as the expansion of the welfare state, that is how um, Democrats as a political party today create a wedge within the black community and turn black men and black women against one another because, and this this is human nature, Jason. If you have a team of people, right, or if you're, if you're a father and you have five kids and you treat all them poorly, they're all gonna hate you. But if you're a father and you treat your firstborn son better than all the other kids, they're all gonna hate him. And this and this is what's happening. They, they treat black women extremely well. And then when, when black men start to grumble, the women turn around and say, oh, that's cause y'all are jealous of our success. That's the problem. Well, maybe if black men step their game up, right? Then you could you can enjoy much of the success as well. And that's one of the reasons that the gender wars continue to uh, be inflamed is because those people are playing four dimensional chess and, and we still haven't even figured out the rules of basic checkers. Delano, uh, enjoy your holiday break. Uh, have a great Christmas. Hope thank Santa's you, good to you. To you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Great job. Uh, get your Fearless Army swag this holiday season at shopblazemedia.com slash fearless. Use my promo code Jason25 for 25% off all orders on the Fearless Shop. Thanks for watching. Freedom came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just wanna have freedom. Sitting on the corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving all the seed when we all wanna be free. We want freedom. I just want, I wanna be, I just want